Sir. Um, I'd watched several of John Lennon's work. And um, the reason these other people don't get what he's saying is because they have no love in them. They're after the money. Tenure. Yeah. And um, he, of course, is right what he's saying. So I'd like him to judge me. Mm. And I will stand up anywhere, anytime, with any person or group of people or the entire world. And they can ask me even posthumous questions like Hitchens, mm. who might be singing a different tune right now. So, someday, the world is cold. I feel the glow, just the way you look to me. <laughs> yes, you're lovely. With your smile, you're so warm and your cheeks so soft. Red as a beetroot. <laughs> Why? Just the way you look tonight, because you're out cutting the grass in the heat. <laughs> if you let the sun do it, it'll keep the grass down. It'll kill it. <laughs> so with each word, your tender works grow, tearing my fear apart, and that laugh that wrinkles your nose. It touches my foolish heart. Lovely, never ever change. Keep that breathless charm. <clears throat> Won't you please arrange it? Because I love you. Just the way you look tonight. Mmm. <laughs> it's eight M's there. <clears throat> Just the way you look tonight. And you're right up the top, the way you look tonight. <laughs> so play as a turn, Sam. I just had some raw milk. How do you feel? I put two magnets in it. In the milk? Yeah. To the neodymiums. Yeah. Which had been used in the electrolysis. It's got the green stuff on it. Yeah. Right. I put that in the raw milk. Yes. Because the milk's not dead. Right. Then I stirred it with a ferrous low intensity, but a 30 mil by, by 20 mil magnet. Yeah. And stirred it uh -huh. right through the milk. Right. I drank it and swallowed the, unfortunately, I swallowed the uh, magnet. So I don't get too close to me. <laughs> no, I took the magnet and I splashed around my mouth and then uh, put it on the chair beside me. Who knows me better than that little magnet? <laughs> so the challenge is on. I will debate the world. I'd love to talk to John Lennox. Mm. And uh, I'd like him to ask the question, why won't no one debate me? Ask, he can go and ask all the ac ac academics. I did the same thing with uh, uh, mental health in Fort Alberni. Mm. Dr. Helen. There's other royal family who told me. He was an Englishman. But we used to talk uh, for longer and longer periods because I was going in there to uh, psych it out and see if I could get the message out because I was doing miraculous things, miracles that the RCMP have recorded and filmed. Mm. <clears throat> I'd like um, any of the academics to ask the RCMP where is this information? Mm. Who are the men that were in the house next door to me? taken films of a miracle that happened when I crushed the glass with my fingers. My voice, audible voice said, squeeze it, what? Squeeze it. it says, squeeze it twice. And it puffed in my fingers like there was nothing. So, that's the God delusion, all right? <laughs> but stuff like that happened all the time. Because they had uh, movies of it. Later, a little RCMP lady come down 
like she was in disguise, supposed to be a, a logging worker or something, but she's wearing RCMP boots. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they thought I was a lunatic. Well, that's their assignment to watch us lunatic, not to say watch the Messiah. But I proved to them I was the Messiah. <clears throat> so uh, she's a witness to that. And so the three men that were there. Then there's uh, the vet I called out at night. I say that the dog's life, put it in my suitcase. Yeah. Demanded he come out. I'd pay the bill. pension. But that little dog had 49 fractures in its skull. Here it is a black cocker spaniel in the middle of a black road at night. No, no member. And someone hit it and drove off. Left of a dead. So she rolled under the car, right? Mm -hmm. So in my suitcase, she picked up my scent. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't worry, I'll fix you. And I was petting her and carrying on. I took her down to the police station. The vet came in. <coughs> Went around the vet's place. And he went to work on it. Next morning, the second house I went to is where she was from. And they thought she's locked up out the back. He's got a black poodle, yeah, black game frog spaniel. Lady says. Goes nuts if you've been able to look. Of the dog's missing one. They're smart. She knew how to get out. So uh, she climbed the fence. <laughs> And um, out the lake later on, when I was back in the house after the two months that doctor so and so wanted to be there, uh, who owned the house, I told him the whole story too, right? And he, became, he testified against me in a court hearing, recommendation box, blah blah blah, inhabiting of his house. <coughs> and uh, I built this big, huge boat at that time, and uh, the kids would, on the holidays, would come there in their little canoes and little pedal things on this beautiful lake, Spirit Lake, and they swarm all over this thing I was building, and it was spiral staircase and great wings stuck out on like a hummingbird, and people were flying over it with their planes and. It used to work on a quarter horsepower motor. Right? Mm. I even had a big snag underneath it to stop it going fast. Right? <laughs> One day there was about oh, I suppose seven or eight men come around looking at it, and uh, the RCMP spy already checked him out. And his son Adam had a twenty-five horsepower jet ski, so they're all standing there. And Adam, I said, bring this jet ski and he put it up against the back of this thing. And it's 30, uh, 36 feet long, I think it was, 16 feet, 11 inches wide. Double story, big mast, all these sails and stuff all over it. And I said, gun. And he gunned it and they all fell over. It moved so easily because it's sitting on a bubble of water, a bubble of air. Uh, beautiful thing. So there's all the movies of that. Someone's got them somewhere. At night, um, when the moon was out, had, a, had all this uh, silver paper down the sides of it. And the moonlight would reflect a mirror image of the scene. And you could see the mirror image in the actual aluminium foil, mm. the dull side out. Yeah. It was like a little hologram. The most beautiful thing you've ever seen. So I had bought a cat, $1,000, Newfoundland. When we arrived in North America on the run from the law in Australia, we're in uh, Las Vegas, and uh, I was going to clean out the casino. Right? And there's this buddy walking up to the casino, there's this cat sitting on the fence, Maine Coon, beautiful. Mm. Oh. I said to Paul, I said, they're everywhere. <laughs> We couldn't find one again in North America, but to go to bloody Newfoundland to get one. So the first cat we seen was a Maine Coon. We buy one, fly it out, $400, pick it up in Victoria, and then the cat gets up inside the bloody car and you couldn't get it out when you're kidding. 
but what a very hassle. It grew up to be this magnificent, uh, about the same size as Sheba, but a bigger tail. that will come out with that, male. And it was almost white. Now get this, we have to be out the house for two months. So we go to the Caribbean park where I find a dog. And we'll get back to that in a minute. Then the cat disappears. 222nd day of the year or something. And it vanishes. So I got to go pay something in town. And uh, I dropped into the vet to see if they found a cat. And I walk into the cat room, and there's this bloody cat sitting there, grinning very merely. So, yeah, it's my cat. She don't know it is. I said, yes, it is. I mean, I can feel me, right? It's identical. It wasn't my cat. I said, they're setting me up because I'm getting paranoid, right? Mm. This is my cat. No, it's not. It's owned by a little Indian and Right. So I've got to take his word for it, right? I'm thinking, bastards, they're setting me up. <coughs> Next thing, while I'm building this boat out of the lake that the kids love, like a hummingbird, right? I sort of like, all, like, like from, the, from the top looked like the Holy Ghost. And there was a, a sharp shaped uh, shield made of cedar. Everything was cedar. And a 286, one inch long uh, petrified tree that came up from the, from the middle of the lake. Not the lady that lakes the very well. So, we could have put it all together. Am I going nuts, paranoid? Because it was lapsing under stress. I went to completely stressed that all the law is against me and uh, all sorts of things are going wrong. By this time, Paul and I had me arrested. I'm out the bloody late, no cat. Next thing, this little Indian girl shows up, paddles up from a couple of doors on, with a mate and a young girl. She asked me if she could store some furniture in the basement because she's got to get out of her apartment. I said, yeah, right. Huh? So we arrange a day, we go to pick her stuff up and she got this cat. My cat. I said, right. So she brings it out and said, would you mind looking after the cat too? <laughs> right? So I think it's a complete setup. So I bring the cat in, by this time Sheba, of course, was raised under the tutelage of Jasper, the ghost. <laughs> oh, that's white. She spots it and she's going to fight it. It ain't him. It is another cat. It is her cat. It's identical. It's like seeing Sheba. And Someone replaces it overnight. Next thing you're doing all sorts of it's nasty, right? But she, what's she doing? You'd be absolutely convinced that she that going nuts. This is my situation I had. So they were trying, the angels this is, to drive me crazy because it is a Shakespearean play. So I could lay back and when I said to you, when I, a crisis comes, I just lay back and watch it say, good shot Satan, right? Then realise I wrote it in the first place. Like I'm the idiot that give free will to man, right? Knowing what he'd do with it. This is how it all comes about. So I got this boat. Little girl comes over. Hello, darling, how are you? She was with the initial mother and the Indian girl. And her mother had said to me that all the way up from Ontario, where they'd come from, I see the eight 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 number of it. They drive in from town. And there's a motorhome for sale, $8,888. <laughs> like, are they in on it? This is the whole point. When I'm arrested, the cops are singing Onward Christian Soldiers, marching off the wall. This gets me into Forensic Institute. Doc Hansen tried to kill me with cyanide. You're Christ. Yeah, and you think of it. We Jews are going to rule the world, aren't they? We're not Jews. This guy just tried to kill me. Just called me Christ. He did. So back to the lake. <clears throat> so many extraordinary things happened there. Which one was Little Sheba. And um, beside the big dock was axe shaped. 
where I built this boat, right, there's a 10 foot square or so little dock beside it, which you could use to put your little canoes against right, or behind. And I was standing on it, and so was Sheba. And as I stepped off, her foot went under the, between the two, so I'd got the upward weight of my body weight, 222 pounds, straight up, and crushed her foot flat, like a piece of paper. And I was just hanging there like this for a month. So I said, don't worry, I'll fix it. And I just grabbed it and I popped back. Now that's all filmed. Everything I did was filmed. <clears throat> I got the Book of Mormon open on like Revelation and I took us to the main spa that was come across the lake miraculously. And Kenny lifted out like a forklift, the thing weighed about a ton and a half. He just lifted it out. That's a fucking angel again. Right, little Kenny Wilson. And I nailed it through the book of Revelation. 3.12. Big four inch note. This is in the court report about me. So the little girl had come with the mother, <coughs> seen all the 888s. I had asked her previously in front of the mother how old she was, and the mother said, August the 8th, 1988. So I'm going to christen the spar of the tree straight down and then all the roots stuck out there about that long, I suppose. And I, she comes over to visit, <coughs> watch me work and carry on and tell jokes and that. And I said, we've got to christen the boat. We'll call it 888, something like that. Right. So I lifted her up and sat her on the thing. I said, all right, all you got to do is tell me your date of birth. She couldn't remember August the 8th, 1988. I just told her 888. <laughs> well, she's a witness. She's an adult now. Right? And I did that. <laughs> so I challenged the world. I asked John Lennox to be my um, adjudicator. adjudicator. And I would debate the entire world or anyone, anywhere, anytime. And if I got the money, I'll pay for the flight myself. Everybody loves them. Um, should you clarify just exactly what level of intellect you're aiming at? Because remember... I'm with this world viewed. I don't care. <laughs> right? Because I'll do all the talking anyhow, right? Someone will ask me a question. That's it. I'll launch. I'll ask you, answer all the questions before they ask me. Ronnie Corbett. And Ronnie Barker did that. It was hilarious. Right? <laughs> Answering the question before it was asked. <laughs> Good show. And he'd give some hilarious answer. And then the question would be, because it's already supposed to be hidden, so he can read the question in his mind, answer it before the question is asked. And always the question asked, there's always something hilarious that he's already said. <laughs> Yeah. All right then. It's all got sin. Anything else? <laughs> so the idea is to get you here, to get your attention. And I want a happy birthday on January eleventh or uh, or what? <laughs> it ain't gonna be a pretty sight. <laughs>